Hi everyone and welcome back. Last week I spoke about the Philistines not being native to the land of Canaan or Israel as we would call it today, but the archaeological evidence tells us that they are from Europe. Now the location where their DNA most closely matches is the Greek island of Crete. The second location where their DNA is a solid match is Iberia, what we would know as Spain. So of course this does lead to the possibility that they originally came from Spain, settled in Greece for a while, and from there moved across to the Levant, down into Egypt, and of course into the area we know today as Israel, where they established five cities. Let's have a look now at the DNA evidence. So this is from the Biblical Archaeology Society, and of course I recommend you look at the first video, I discuss who they are, and um, thank you again to all my supporters for providing me the funds that I could subscribe and get this material. So this article is called Illuminating the Philistines' Origins. Ancient DNA confirms the Philistines' European ancestry. And it says here, the bones don't lie. The Philistines had European ancestry. A 2019 study published in Science Advances analyzes DNA extracted from 10 people buried during the 2nd and 1st millennia BC at the site of Ashkelon on the Mediterranean Sea. Now let's go here. So Ashkelon is a city just along here on the coast of Israel. So go to the first video, check that. It's only a few minutes long, 15 minutes at most, and you'll get all of that background information. So it shows the inhabitants of Ashkelon during the Iron Age, which was 1200 to 1000 BC, and these were the Philistines, and they had DNA with a significantly larger amount of European ancestry than the site's earlier and later inhabitants. So clearly they came from the outside, settled there. The prior inhabitants did not have this European ancestry, and once these people had been absorbed into the local gene pool, that European ancestry obviously died out. But for that period, they were clearly from outside. This is some of the archaeology that's going on, and of course here you can see this uh, skeleton that was utilized, one of the skeletons apparently utilized for the DNA evidence. Rachel Kalisha, a member of the Leon Levi Expedition's physical anthropology team, documents a 10th to 9th century BC burial in Ashkelon's Philistine Cemetery. So the Hebrew Bible claims that the Philistines came from Kaftor, and displaced the earlier inhabitants of the land. So this is in Deuteronomy 2.23, Jeremiah 47.4, and Amos 9 verse 7. The location of Kaftor and whether the Philistines did indeed come from it have long been debated. So scholars connect the Philistines to the Sea Peoples Movement, a migration of people from the islands. Now this is according to an inscription by Ramses III at Medinet Habu. Just to remind you, Medinet Habu is right here. So this here, this is Spain, Iberia, right? This is the Greek island of Crete right here. This is the Greek mainland. This is Italy right here, right? And this, Alexandria, this is Israel. Ashkelon will be in roughly this area. And Medinet Habu is here on the Nile. So I can zoom in a little bit. But this is the area where Medinet Habu is. These people actually sailed up and even invaded Egypt. So according to that inscription by Ramses III at Medinet Habu, they migrated to the Levant around 1200 BC at the end of the Late Bronze Age and the beginning of the First Iron Age, or Iron Age I as they call it. Ancient texts and inscriptions record the migration, often describing it as an invasion. Right, And of course, uh, I've covered in some of my previous videos that the Philistines are known as the invaders. So you can look at my uh, my video, um, which is the Palestinian invasion of Israel or the Palestinian occupation of Israel, where I discuss a little bit more of that. Now, many scholars think the islands and Kaftor refer to Crete or another location in the Aegean world. As I said, this article is not directly connected to the other. It's just additional evidence. However, we know from the DNA evidence that Crete is the most likely candidate, along with Iberia. So those two may be connected, as I mentioned in the beginning. Some have suggested locations as far away as Italy, or as near as Cyprus or Cilicia, the southeastern coast of modern Turkey. And again, Crete is now the preferred location due to the DNA evidence, that the DNA matches that of people living in Crete.
Some think the Sea Peoples were not a homogenous group, but composed of various Eastern Mediterranean peoples or perhaps bands of pirates. Now, again, we can dismiss a lot of these theories because, again, the DNA evidence. We have new evidence now that tells us, look, it's very likely these people came from Spain, possibly migrated to Crete, and then from there migrated into the Levant and into Canaan. Others reject the notion that the Philistines migrated to the Levant. They think the Philistines were indigenous to the Levant, again, very unlikely, and that the new culture appearing in Philistia during the Iron Age one resulted from new ideas and knowledge that had either spread from other cultures or developed internally. Or perhaps they came from Mars, and they just happened to migrate across space. That's also possible. The Hebrew Bible and other ancient texts identify Ashkelon as a major Philistine city. Let's actually go to Ashkelon. Let's go back to Google Maps here. Let's have a look. Ashkelon, Israel. So let's go have a look at that. So this is Ashkelon here on the coast. And yeah, so that's Ashkelon right there. And this is Gaza. Now, of course, they also settled this area. And this is one of the major reasons why the Palestinians claim that they are the Philistines because they claim direct descent from Gaza. But of course, we know that they are Arabs. They are not in any way genetically related to these Philistines. Again, my video on the Palestinian occupation of Israel will cover a bit more of that. So Ashkelon is a major Philistine city, along with the cities of Gaza, Ashdod, Ekron, and Gath. Uh, this is mentioned in Joshua 13, verses 2 to 3. Philistia's heartland includes these five cities and their vicinities, but its hinterland extended much further. So all of the major Philistine cities have been excavated or are currently being excavated, such as Talisafi Gath, whose excavations are led by Aden Meyer of Barilan University. The archaeological remains from the major Philistine sites show that, the begin that beginning in the Iron Age 1, the inhabitants of these sites exhibited a recognizable, distinct culture. And I did say in the first video, that even once they had been absorbed genetically through intermarriage into the other cultures, they still retained a unique identity. Their pottery, their architecture, their, their, the colors they used, the styles, the patterning, this was still specific to them as a culture. So they remembered their heritage from the location that they originally came from. Their architecture, pottery, jewelry, tools, and weapons looked different from those of their neighbors and of the site's predecessors. So culturally, they were distinct from the earlier inhabitants as well as those inhabitants around there. And this is additional evidence to state that they came from outside, that these were foreigners who settled, who invaded, right? Um, as I do say in my video, as I've mentioned before, the Palestinian occupation of Israel, the Hebrew word is plishtim, which means invaders. And they're Patterns, these jewelry, these tools, these weapons, this architecture, this pot pottery is similar to that of the Igean world. So again, another link. The Leon Levi expedition excavated Ashkelon from 1985 to 2016, directed by the late Lawrence Stager of Harvard University and Daniel Master of Wheaton College. The expedition uncovered archaeological remains that spanned 6,000 years from the Chalcolithic period, which is approximately 4,000 BC, all the way to the time of the Crusaders and the Mamluks, roughly 1270 AD. During the course of the excavations, the archaeologists, the archaeologists uncovered numerous burials, including a large Philistine cemetery, which dates from the 10th to 9th centuries BC. The discovery and excavation of the cemetery allowed the team to extract the necessary DNA to analyze Ashkelon's population from the Iron Age II. So the author of the Science Advances article, and I did put a link in the very first video, I'll link it here as well, so you can download the actual paper. It's in the description. Michael Fellman, Daniel Master, Rafaela A. Bianco, Marta Buri, and Philip W. Stockhammer, Alyssa Mitnick, Adam J. Aja, and Chung Wan Jong, and Johannes Krause compared the DNA of 10 individuals from three different time periods at Ashkelon, the Bronze Age, Iron Age 1, and Iron Age 2. Archaeologists uncovered the three Bronze Age individual from, individuals from tombs. Two of these individuals were dated by radiocarbon to 1746 to 1643 and 1622 to 1522 BC, which aligns with the Middle Bronze Age II to Late Bronze Age. So the four individuals from the Iron Age I were infants buried in jars under the floor of 12th century BC houses. 
and the three Iron Age II individuals came from 10th to 9th century BC Philistine cemetery. The results show that the Bronze Age peoples of Ashkelon had heritage that derived from the Stone Age inhabitants of the Levant and populations that originated in Anatolia and Iran. Interestingly enough, so those are people indigenous to the region who had migrated. The authors refer to this as the local Levantine gene pool, although the ancestry of the early Iron Age infants is also primarily local Levantine. It had an admixture of European genes. By the time of the Iron Age II, the ancestry of the people at Ashkelon once again returned to the local Levantine gene pool. The European gene pool no longer being pronounced, no longer emphasizing or expressing itself. So the influx of European heritage in the people of Ashkelon from the Iron Age one supports the theory that the Philistines came from the Aegean world. This would be around Greece. And again, specifically, they have referenced Crete as the most likely candidate based on the DNA match and migrated to the Levant. In fact, all of the models created to explain the heritage of the early Iron Age infants, the model combining the local Levantine gene pool with a Southern European gene pool, such as from Crete or Iberia, works the best. So I'll go back to the map. So for this area here, the DNA match, when you combine it with DNA from Iberia, Spain, as well as Crete here. That works the best. So it's very probable from here to here to here. They also went across into Turkey. So apparently they sailed and I had that map in the previous episode. So now, interestingly, the European ancestry disappears after a couple of generations. By the 10th and 9th centuries BC, the people group still called the Philistines no longer show significant European ancestry. By that time, they had likely intermarried with the local population, so they were diluting their gene pool. Extracting and studying DNA opens new doors for the field of archaeology, and Daniel Master tells Bible History Daily, the study of the DNA has the potential to transform our understanding of the past, but it is critically important that it be combined with the careful study of archaeological remains and ancient texts. So this is what I covered in the first episode. So given both of these sets of data, we've got a fairly good reason to believe that they came from the region that we've discussed. So this genetic information adds to the story of the Philistines, but it's one chapter in a story that scholars have been writing for more than a century. So although the results of the DNA analysis from Ashkelon answer some questions about the Philistines, they raise some new ones apparently. What did the DNA of the first Philistines to land in the Levant look like? Because as, as it is, this European ancestry, well, this European DNA is mixed with the locals. So there's no pure specimen. Now, it's very probable they might in the future, or it's possible, they may in the future find someone who lived there. But of course, they were wiped out. And I do discuss this again in the, in the other video that I mentioned earlier. They were wiped out. So they no longer, so they interbred and they were also wiped out by conquerors who came later. So we may find a body, but... You know, we'd have to identify this as the Philistines. So, you know, we'll have to wait for science to catch up with that one fine day. Hopefully there's a lucky accident. When did the Philistines begin to intermarry with the local Levantine population? And will we ever be able to pinpoint Kaftor's exact location? So, yeah, um, someone did mention uh, Corfu, but apparently Corfu would not be a good match. Um, both linguistically based on the name and the previous name, uh, but also just in terms of the DNA, it's not a match. So, yeah, there's the full scientific report. Okay, it's called Ancient DNA Sheds Light on the Genetic Origins of the Early Iron Age Philistines, published in Science Advances 3, July 2019. I will put the various links in the description. And uh, thank you for your time. Have you guys a wonderful day. Till next time.